Have you made a decision and are you on the journey to becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire? I bet you're wondering what to expect next. And I bet you're always wondering and constantly anxious about what's around the corner. How do I know? I was exactly there. And because I want you to see you win with all I got here on this YouTube channel, I'm going to share with you the three phases of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. And as many of you know, have been following our YouTube channel. Yes, we are finally back from Maui. And by the looks of it here in Chicago, I thought we brought some of the sunshine back because instead of being at 25, we're now upgraded to 45 degrees here in Chicago. But nonetheless, I know exactly some of the challenges you might be going through in your journey becoming financially free, and in this case, becoming a millionaire. Now, I've been doing this for quite some time. I I've got 47 years of life behind me. I got 22 years of being in business and specifically the last eight years building a business where I have scale. I'm duplicating myself into other people. We're growing a national business, not just a local practice, but a national business. And I see these phases all the time in the people that we coach and we mentor. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the three simple steps to guide you through and some of the things you should expect along the way. Now, regardless of what you do, regardless if you are in a new business, you're in a new industry, you're adopting a new skill set, you're creating new habits of becoming financially free and financially independent, becoming debt free, etc., etc. No matter what you go through, these are universal principles for change. The first phase is being awkward. I remember when I was transitioning out of the Marine Corps, all I knew how to do was becoming a mechanic on helicopters on the ground and being a door gunner in the air when we flew CH-46 helicopters. And when I got involved in sales, I got involved in business, I got involved in the insurance industry, I was kind of wigged out because this is completely all new to me. I didn't have a college degree, I didn't have a sales or business background, but I knew I needed to change my life. So I entered smack dab right in the awkward phase. And what am I talking about? High levels of frustration, I'm getting more no's than yeses, especially in the military, I wasn't used to the word no. I wasn't used to the words and the phrases, I'll think about it, catch back up with me next week. For us in the Marine Corps, it's done now. And so me experiencing knows, and I'll think about it, and I'll ask my wife or ask my husband, it's completely foreign territory to me. And I was put in a position because it was insurance, because it was finance, because it was sales, because it was making phone calls, because it was following up, looking to peak interest, I was unsure of myself, and I was stuttering. And I'd be in a position where Am I doing the right thing? I was actually doubting my decision to becoming financially free through this vehicle called entrepreneurship. And my mentors, they'd say, man, pick up the phone, man, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. Well, back then, I'm probably dating myself here, but back then, I didn't start my business with a cell phone. I started my business in my coach's office, my mentor's office, my manager's office, both using the fax line for those messages. I know I just said fax. It's correct, F-A-X, called a fax machine. Okay, let's just stop right there. I know you're probably dropping some comments below here about how old I am, but I get it. But the phone was heavy nonetheless. And for people even today, their cell phones, because they're in the awkward phase, becomes heavy too as well. And the weird thing about people's cell phones today, especially if you are getting involved in business, you're getting involved in sales, you're getting involved in becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire through the vehicle of entrepreneurship. Lots of times people do more activities on their phone. Notice I'm doing this. Notice they do more activities on the phone, text messages, apps, versus actually making phone calls, reaching out to people, getting a human connection going on beyond just copy and text. So what's some of the ways you can overcome this awkward phase? The solution to this is leverage. Leverage what though? Leverage the experiences of your mentor, leverage the experiences of your coach, leverage the experiences of a consultant, and borrow their experiences as you gain yours. In my evolution as an entrepreneur, I've had three people that I've leveraged. Number one, I leveraged the person that recruited me initially until I got to see the world and see things the way he saw things. Because for me initially, the way I saw my life, the way I was in 1999, is that I needed a change. And I needed to borrow confidence. I needed to borrow 
insight. I need to borrow experience. I need to borrow his wisdom. And so the person I leveraged the most was the guy that recruited me. He was a retired master sergeant, spent 20 years in the Marine Corps and showed me the ropes in terms of here's life insurance, here's retirement planning, here's the business world. He kicked open the door. Uh, he said, hey Matt, let me take your green collar attitude, military uniform, right? Green collar attitude, your desire to help people, your desire to fight for your country, and let me introduce it into a white collar world where you're actually going to get paid what you deserve and more than what you deserve. Awesome. So I'm leveraging the experience of the person that recruited me. And then as I got to mature in the business and I was facing another phase of awkward, I was leveraging those that were educating me about insurance. So for example, I'm sitting in a room with just simple college, no college degree, just a simple high school diploma. I've been insurance licensed and I'm sitting around this conference room with attorneys, with CPAs, certified public accountants, uh, CFPs, certified financial planners, CLUs, people with the you know, designations behind their last name, MBAs, people a whole lot more smarter than me, they're talking to me. And I'm wondering why they're talking to me because they needed to do some training with me because I was doing what they couldn't do, which is go out and find customers. And so they were, I was educating them and, I was, and they were educating me on the things I needed and the things they were using to support me. And they were educating me on how to articulate strategic financial concepts. And I needed to make them simple. So I leveraged their education. And then once I started to improve my business and I started to phase and go to the second, third phases, I went back to the awkward phase and I started to leverage the conversation I had for those and the person that was going to develop me and to help me scale. So leverage, and by the way, this is a skill set that you will use for the rest of your life if you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Because after a while, it's going to be multi-millionaire, you're going to be a decamillionaire, you're going to be, for those who continue to pursue, you're going to be a hundred, hundred fifty million dollar uh, type person. But you're always going to use leverage. If you don't use, if you don't learn how to use this now, forget about it, hang it up. Leverage is what makes millionaires millionaires. They leverage the knowledge and experience of other people, uh, and so therefore they can manifest that into their own reality, saying, hey, I'm taking information, 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 boom, 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 I process it, boom, and then I move into my next steps, the next couple of phases here of becoming a millionaire. So the solution to all this, you don't have to learn everything yourself. Oftentimes I run this, run this across some people who say, man, I need to learn everything about life insurance. I need to learn everything about being a financial advisor, need to learn everything about being a lawyer, need everything about being a real. No, you just, in, in, in business, as an entrepreneur, you need customers. You need to, to create transactions. You need to create relationships. And you need to surround yourself with people that know more at this point about everything else that you do. And you do what you do best, which is market and put yourself out there, attract potential clientele and attract people that's potentially gonna work with you and for you. That's your job in this awkward phase. Okay, phase two. Mechanical, all right, you, you kind of got dangerous a little bit. You, you got your licenses, you got some confidence behind you, you got some sales, you got some clientele, you've hired a couple of people working with, together with you. Now you're gonna face the mechanical phase. What does it sound like, what does it feel like? Your knowledge is way up, you're a lot more knowledgeable what you're doing. You started to develop new habits, which is awesome. You started to purge old habits that weren't serving you, you started to acquire habits that will serve you. However, you're still sounding robotic on the phone. You're still sounding scripted. And when it comes to results, there's no connection. And because there's no connection, people don't do business with you. And they don't tend to trust you. Why? Because you sound like a robot. Because you're mechanical. You know, when, when I'm listening to our guys, we're, we have a, a session called Phone Zone. And I got my Zoom open. I got people here in the office making phone calls. I'm just listening to how people make phone calls. I'm listening to how people make phone calls. And I'm realizing that they're stuck on a script. They're stuck and rigid on thinking about what to ask next and what to say next versus listening to what the person is telling them. That's an indicator of becoming mechanical in your business because you're still, you might be awkward, but here now you're getting a little bit more nervous because you kind of know what to do and you know money or opportunity is on the line. You don't want to lose it and you lock up. Instead of playing loose, you sound robotic. So what's the solution? Here's the solution. People often ask me when they're in this phase, hey Matt, 
What do I say to this person? What do I say to this person? What do I say to this person? What do I say? Listen, that's how you know you're in the mechanical phase. The solution to get up and out of the mechanical phase, so therefore you don't sound robotic, scripted, and lacking connection with whomever it is that you're talking to, instead of paying attention of what to say, you should be paying attention of how to listen more, or more importantly, how to ask better questions. Because once you ask better questions, guess what happens? That customer, the client, the person you're interviewing, the person sadly you might be firing, they're going to feel a lot more connection with you because you're intrigued about their situation and people are going to feel like you're listening to them. And when you're listening, well, guess what happens? Both parties are happy with the conversation because they get what they want, you get what they want. It might not be continuing business going forward, so therefore you let go the wrong person that's not meant for your company or your firm or this wrong client that's not meant for a long-term fit for you and your long-term plans. But you tend to listen more because you're asking more and because you're asking more, the person gonna tell you exactly what they're looking for. Your relatability skyrockets. Guess what happens when your relate, relatability skyrockets? Their ability to trust you also potentially skyrockets too. So not to say that they're automatically gonna trust you, but the opportunity for them to potentially trust you also skyrockets because you relate to them. Again, it's not what you say, it's what you ask. So people don't wanna be pitched. We just did a conference with our guys two weeks ago in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> Believe it or not, with all those snowstorms and ice roads and all the cancel flights, we had story after story after story after story of people laboring to get from wherever they were in the country to come to our live event in Louisville, Kentucky, which was just covered in snow. Yes, the South. And guess what? We're expecting a 20-30% drop in attendance, but instead, we had a 25% increase in people who originally thought we were going to show up. People wanted their blessing. People that didn't think we were going to show up showed up. Our guest speakers, uh, Tim Tebow, Douglas Andrew, Jeff Blunt, Patrick Bed David, all showed up in spite of the weather. And I remember Jeb Blunt saying, we we're interviewing backstage, which is an interview we will be coming shortly here on Seven Figure Squad, who is the author of Fanatical Prospecting, author of Sales EQ. He's a fantastic sales trainer. He said, oftentimes people think that selling or building a business is what you're pitching. No, it's about how you're asking. Because quite frankly, you're not asking for money. It's not like you're going on Shark Tank, you're pitch, 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 pitch. That's not the conversation. You're selling somebody your product or service. You're selling somebody why they should work with you or for you. And once you ask more questions about what they want, guess what happens? You start dropping the phase of becoming mechanical, and then you flow into third phase. And the third phase is becoming natural, which is awesome. You know, when I'm thinking about being natural, I, I reference a lot of professional sports, because you know, we got this t-shirt called Entrepathly, right? This is my, one of my favorite shirts, because we treat business like sport. You know, I'm studying athletes, when I'm studying pro athletes, I'm just a frustrated jock was never good enough to play professional sports. I'm a huge fan of professional sports. I just love the embodiment of competition, of victory, of just, just brags the riches, zero to hero because of sports. That's why we created that brand, Entrepath, that t-shirt called Entrepathly. And I'm listening and watching these guys break down game tape. I'm watching them study the game. So the biggest reason why people fail in business is because they don't study the game back to awkward phase. The reason why you're failing in business and you're awkward because you're not studying your business. And watch these guys pay attention to the, the, uh, the, the player they're going up against. They're paying attention to their mannerisms. They're paying attention to their hand placement. They're paying attention to how the person stands up when it's a run or how they're standing when it's a pass and some of the tendencies that they go through. And you know what they start picking up? Wow, these guys are studying details. And being natural is not thinking about the game, it's being the game, it's just playing the game. And oftentimes people get caught up and getting caught up back to mechanical because they're just robotic in their approach instead of actually doing the study. Because when these guys say, listen, I, if I do the right study, or if I do the right film work, if you, do, if you do the right, what's the film work in your business? If you're studying yourself, ask yourself, if I'm listening to myself, I'm watching myself, would people buy from me? And if you say no, then you need to work on your craft. And these players are studying their physical movements their gestures, their placements, because they don't want to tip off anything. If they are 
getting paid millions and millions of dollars to study their movements, what about you? As an entrepreneur, are you really studying not only the phase of becoming a millionaire, but your craft, the intricacies and the details of your business? So therefore, instead of thinking about the game, you're just playing the game and you're just playing loose. Because that's what these guys want to do. When they come off the sidelines, it's time for them. The ball is snapped. I'm just referencing football a lot, but when the ball is snapped, are you thinking about what to do or are you just naturally reacting to what you've been studying? And that's getting involved in a natural phase of business. So what's some of the indicators that you are now in the natural phase? Well, listen, you're flowing. And when you're flowing, you can play offense. You're attacking. And, and when you're natural, you're relaxed. You're intentional about your questions. You're intentional about your mannerisms. You're intentional about how you sit on a chair, how you position your body. You're intentional about your physiology. You're intentional about your vocabulary, the person that you're relating to or the, the company or the audience that you're speaking to, you're intentional about all that. I, I remember uh, uh, going to uh, San Francisco, the Bay Area, and I just did, did a couple of tweaks. I have the same general PowerPoint presentation when I go to many different places, be, be asked to speak at different uh, cities and states, and I just do a little bit of homework to study about that location. For example, I went to San Jose, come to find out that in the nine counties of the Bay Area, $117,000 is considered low income. So what did I do? I put it up on my PowerPoint. I went to the hotel and grabbed the newspaper and showed that real estate around there, $1 million buys you a shack in the Bay Area. So people need to make more money. When you're in the natural phase, you're confident, you're competitive, you're a professional having fun. And guess what? This whole journey towards becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire should be fun. You should be having a blast. Speaking of having a blast, we just came back from Maui, and every year we end up taking, well, no matter where we go, we, we, first year we went to Cancun, we went to Costa Rica, uh, this time we went to Dubai, we went to Italy, Croatia, uh, Greece. We just came back from Hawaii, about to take our guys to Bora Bora in June, but every place we've gone, the people that we've coached and mentored seems to be more and more get qualified for these type of world-class travel trips. Why? Because we're having fun doing it. We're having a blast. So to make sure that you get in the natural phase, we have, we have, a, we have some things here. Le leverage is awkward. Mechanicals listen more. Natural, you're going to be in a phase now of enlightening other people because you're enlightening yourself. People start quoting you. People start tweeting you. People start taking notes with what you're talking about. People are following you on Instagram, people are following you on social media. More importantly, people are having results. People are having results if they choose to follow what you're doing and go through this phase themselves. Now, I wanna wrap this up with three questions to ask yourself to help you graduate from awkward to mechanical to natural to the fun part about all this is number one, what type of life do you want? What life did you sign up for? The biggest challenge we have with a lot of people today, especially what they see on social media, what they see is behind the scenes is the stuff you really don't want to see, which is the hard work, which is the making the phone calls. I mean, just yesterday, we, just, we literally got off the airplane at 6 o'clock in the morning. By the time we got home, it was 7 o'clock. And I have, a, I have normally a 9 o'clock meeting on Fridays. And the question is, do I sleep? Because I didn't sleep all night. We had a two-year-old with us that didn't sleep throughout the night. The night before, we were up till three o'clock with, uh, with cigars on the beach with my mentor, Patrick, but David talking to our group. I had like zero sleep in two and a half, three days. The night before that, we had another long conversation. So literally in three days, I think I had about six hours worth of sleep. But I made a choice at that point. I said, I made a conversation to myself that I'm committed to a nine o'clock conversation, coffee with MSG, we call it, coffee with the money smart guy at nine o'clock. And... I came right here to the office, came right from the airport, dropped my kids off, put my kids to sleep, nanny came in, boom, I'm here at the office. One hour of sleep, two hours of sleep at most on the airplane at that. You know why? Because the life I signed up for was to crack open the next best version of me at all times. And I remember doing this for the military. I remember doing this for somebody else. Why not for me? So for me, the answer to this question is, what type of life do you want? Well, I'm willing to learn sooner than later. Now, whatever your questions, I'd love to know 
what that potentially might be if you're comfortable sharing with it, what life do you want? Drop in the comment section below. What life do you want? Second, how bad do you want it? Listen, the only time success and convenience hang out is in the dictionary. But they're not friends. The only time that work comes after success is in the dictionary. So how bad do you want it? And more importantly, why do you want it? Are you sick and tired and sick and tired of this pandemic 2020, 2021, kicking your tail? Furloughed, laid off, businesses shut down, things not under your control? Well, then you need to find ways to make sure you're making money regardless of what's going on in the situation. Maybe you need to put together a cash flow river so therefore die in the road. You can divert some streams, but not too early though, right? Right now you need a Mississippi River of cash flow for you to develop, so therefore you never worry about money ever again. And by the way, potentially, that can happen. Our guys last year, they decided to go through the awkward mechanical natural phase. Guess what? We paid them over $13.5 million last year. And that's money, what that reflects is money that they weren't depending on the government, they weren't, they weren't depending on church and charity, they weren't depending on PPP loan. They were self-sustaining entities because they chose to go in business for themselves because that's how bad they wanted. They didn't want to depend on nobody else. Last question. Do you have a mentor? Do you have someone to show you the ropes? Do they have a blueprint? Do they have a proof of concept? Are you the first person to helping? Are you the last person to helping? Those are some of the questions you probably want to ask too as well. Do you have somebody in your corner? And right now, if you physically don't have anybody in your corner, you physically can't pick up the phone and call somebody to help you walk through, walk you through these three phases, guess what? That's why you subscribe to the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel and potentially I could be your digital, I don't know, I don't know if it's called a digital mentor, digital coach. Maybe I could be that person in your life for the time being. So before I let you go, I want you to watch a couple videos here. Number one, how to build confidence like a millionaire. Check that video out and how to raise your confidence to get through the awkward mechanical and now to the natural phase. And the second video I want you to watch is the last thing that millionaires think about which is done on the beaches of Maui with my mentor, Patrick Beddib. So with that being said, guys, appreciate you tuning into this video. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what your comments are. Let me know what your follow-up questions are in the comments section below. Potentially you might share this with somebody else that you know is going through these three phases, some area of frustration and uh, robotic um, scriptedness, so to speak. So that being said, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm a money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be money smart today.